Good morning, everybody. It is 11 o'clock and it's Easter Monday, so it is April 5th. Welcome to, today, to today's live stream. I am Ian, your teacher, and today we are going to talk about getting and giving directions. So telling someone where to go um, and asking somebody if you don't know where you are in the city, where can you find the place that you want to get to? So maybe you need to get to the bus station or the restaurant or a coffee shop or gas station. So this is a very valuable skill uh, when you are learning your way around. And it is also a requirement for the Canadian language benchmarks. So today this, le uh, this lesson is for CLB three or four. So like a high beginner level. Uh, but hopefully everybody can learn a little something from today's lesson. So if you're watching the lesson live, please say hi, please ask your questions, and please answer when I ask you guys questions. Uh, if you're watching the replay on YouTube or Facebook, you can also comment then, and I will get to your questions after the lesson. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. All right, so let's get going. Um, anybody out there in the in the internet world. Um, so, like I said, today is getting and giving directions. So, when was the last time that you asked for directions? When is the last time that you gave somebody directions? Uh, I know everybody has cell phones now that have Google Maps, and they tell us exactly where to go all the time. But remember, we're working on our English, uh, and we can't always rely on technology. Right, you, especially parts of Canada, Canada is a big place. We don't always have cell phone reception. So uh, it is important to know how to get and give directions. So uh, Natalia is there. She says, Chris, Chris, I guess she's asking her friend to pay attention and join in the live stream. Cool, thank you, Natalia. I uh, hope you're doing well out there. All right, let's move on to our next slide. So uh, today's outline, we're going to be together for about 40, 45 minutes today. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the CLB competencies. So what you need to know for the Canadian language benchmarks. So this can help you improve your level. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the grammar involved in giving directions. We're going to learn some vocabulary. So there is quite a lot of vocabulary to discuss today. Uh, then we're going to give some phrases for asking for and giving directions. Then we're going to do a practice. Uh, we're going to do some practice. And then we're going to give you a few tips to wrap up today. All right, so uh, we mentioned CLB competency. So today we're practicing our listening and speaking. So for level three, CLB three, when you are speaking, you need to be able to give two to three step instructions and directions. So for example, tell a new student where to sit and give directions to the classroom. So two or three steps. So go down the hall, turn right, go 20 meters, and turn left and there you will find the classroom. So two or three steps is pretty easy to do. For listening, we need to be able to follow two to four step common instructions and directions. So for example, instructions for a classroom activity or directions to a washroom. So very important you understand directions to the washroom or else you might pee your pants and nobody wants you to pee your pants, right? So. It is very, very important we understand those directions to the closest washroom. For level four, so if you are a CLB level four, you need to be able to give longer directions. So you need to be able to give four or five step directions. For example, give directions to a familiar place or give instructions on how to set an alarm clock. What's an alarm clock? Nobody has those anymore. Uh, for listening, you need to be able to follow four to five step common instructions and directions for familiar everyday situations. 
So for example, you follow directions for a simple recipe or give instructions from a doctor or follow simple instructions from a doctor. So maybe you're following five step directions to a certain place in your city. So as you can see, directions and instructions are a big part of the Canadian language benchmarks. And to improve your level, you need to be able to give and understand directions. So that's why we are doing what we're doing today. Grammar wise, giving directions or instructions are pretty easy, but there's one important thing to remember. Remember, don't use a subject when giving directions or instructions. So there's two ways to say it. One, go down King Street for three blocks. Or some people might say, you go down King Street for three blocks. But one of those is correct. I would suggest the first one. So don't say you go down King Street for three blocks. Better just to say go down King Street for three blocks. Okay, so often we don't say the subject when giving directions to somebody. Okay, so keep that in mind. Don't use the subject for directions. For vocabulary today, uh, there's quite a few important key vocabulary that we need to cover. So one, we'll talk about ordering words. Ordering words put steps in the right order. Okay, so we'll go over those. Verbs, there are common verbs that are used when giving directions, uh, and we'll cover those as well. Units of measure, so things like uh, blocks or meters or feet, often we use those to tell somebody how far to go or how long to travel to that place. Prepositions, so prepositions are little words that say where or when, okay? For example, on, we gave an example back here. Uh, go down, down King Street for three blocks. So in that sentence, down is a preposition and for is a preposition. So that one actually has two prepositions. So we'll go over some prepositions that are used in directions. And we'll also give you a few places around the city that you should know. Sound good? Anybody give me a thumbs up? Anybody out there? I see four people are watching. I know my wife is one of them, I hope. She said she was going to, and I would be very disappointed if she wasn't watching. So let's go over the ordering words. So usually with directions or instructions, we give ordering words. So first, the first thing, you do this. Second thing, you do this, okay? so. Those are very common. Oh, Michelle gave me the thumbs up. Hi, sweetie. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's her in the cold water. She's a, she's a cold water swimmer. Um, so first, second, then. So the next thing we can say then go this way or then go that way. After that, uh, after you do this thing, then you do that thing. Next, you do this thing. Finally, finally is usually the last step in a series of steps. Finally, you do this final step and then you're there. Okay, so it is important we understand ordering words and we're able to use them when giving directions to somebody. Okay, so usually our directions will start with some type of ordering word. Anybody give me the thumbs up, are we good? Do you have any questions about these? So these are very, very common ordering words we can use for directions. There may be more, right? We may say before you do this, then you do that. Um, yeah, so these are not all the ordering words, but these are appropriate for your level. Okay, moving on. I hope, there we go. So verbs, these are the, the 
things you do. These are the ways that you travel from one place to another. So you can drive there in your car. You can just go. Go means maybe you're driving, maybe you're walking, maybe you're biking. Uh, it doesn't matter. We can use go for any of those situations. Maybe we say walk. Walk down King Street for five minutes and you will get to your destination. Uh, turn, turn is very important. So we need to turn right or left, although it looks the opposite the way that you guys see me. So my right is this way. That would be your left, right? Yeah, that's right. My right is your left. My left is your right. Um, so we need to turn. Turn left, turn right. And we also use the word take. Take a left. Take a right. Uh, take a bridge. You know, take this street. So these words, drive, go, walk, turn, and take are very commonly used in directions. Got it? Good. Okay. Then we have to measure how far or how long do you need to go. So often we use blocks. A block is one square in a city. So there's a road here, there's roads here, and there's a road here. That is called one block. So we could say go four blocks and turn right and the restaurant is on the left side. Okay, so blocks are used a lot, especially in the city. Outside of the city, usually there's not blocks. Canada is just one big forest. So in that case, we wouldn't use blocks. We would use a longer distance, like kilometers or kilometers, as we might say, or miles. Some people in Canada still use miles. Um, so. A mile is 1.6 kilometers. Uh, for shorter distances, we might use meters and feet. So meter is about three point something feet. Uh, in Canada, usually we use meters, but some people still use feet. So for measuring distance, blocks. Blocks is a fairly large distance. Meters is a smaller distance. And kilometers is a long long distance. So depending on how far we need to go, we would give measurements of blocks, meters, or kilometers. And we can also use minutes. So Canada is a big country. So maybe you're driving an hour, two hours, uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. So often instead of giving measurements in distance, we give it in time, how long it takes one person to travel there. Okay, anybody still out there? I know it's Easter Monday, you might be sleeping in. Uh, maybe you're in church, so you can watch afterwards. Prepositions, prepositions are a little bit tricky to learn because there are so many of them and we use them in very particular or special ways. So when we're giving directions, we use on. Uh, on this street. Oh, Anna's here. Hi, Anna. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, smiley face. Welcome to today's live stream. Great. Uh, so today, sorry, we're on prepositions. On, on a street, uh, on the corner. So this is often used to say, where is the location, right? About, because sometimes we're not sure how far it is exactly. So we might say drive about, 10 minutes, depending on how fast you drive. Uh, walk about three blocks. Maybe it's two blocks, maybe two and a half, maybe three, maybe four. We don't know exactly how many blocks. Four. Uh, four, we usually say when we're giving directions about how long, right? So, you know, walk for two miles, walk for one kilometer. Um, so four is often used before the distance, until. So often we have, there is a place that everybody knows or a street that everybody knows. 
So you can say, go until you see the church or go until you see the school and the place you want is after that or before that. Uh, next two. So next two is beside. So, you know, in my neighborhood, the Starbucks is next to the gas station. The next word is across from. So on the other side. So in my neighborhood, the bank is across from the gas station. So there is a road between those. Okay, uh, next word is past. So we might say go past um, Tim Hortons and turn right on Dunbrack Street. Okay, so go go by this or go past it and then the place you want will be on the left or right. Toward, okay, this is one that might be a little bit tricky for you. What does toward mean? T-O-W-A-R-D, toward. Anybody out there? Three, two, one. My friend Trevor says I should play the Jeopardy music during the time that I'm waiting. Do, uh, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. No, nobody got it. Okay, uh, Jeopardy song is over. So toward means in the direction. Okay, so drive toward downtown or drive toward the ocean. Chris Chris, awesome. Chris Chris got it. So it's in the direction of something. Um, exactly, Chris. So good job. Toward the beach toward the mountains, toward downtown, toward your home, something like that. Okay, great job, Chris. Uh, Michelle is laughing at my silly song, so I'm glad that I amuse you, Michelle. Uh, I guess that's why you married me in the first place, but we'll never know, right? Okay, um, yes, Chris. Chris is back toward Toronto. Very good, just don't say to, just say toward Toronto. Uh, because actually toward has the word to in it, right? To, toward has the word to, so don't need to say toward to a place. So just say toward Toronto, but you're exactly right, Chris. And then we need to know left and right, right? Turn left, turn right. We need to know our lefts and rights. Sometimes we forget, but there is an easy way. Uh, hold up your hands like this. When you look at your hands, I see this one. To me, this looks like an L. So L for left, right? That's a capital L. Maybe I have to turn this way. So does that look right? Yeah, that looks like an L. So I see the L shape. This is my left. This is my right. This is my left. This is my right. We should make a song. We'd make millions. Okay, so left and right. Uh, Anna's here. Anna says thumbs up. Okay, I think she's giving the thumbs up for toward. Maybe she learned a new word or a new idea in today's lesson. And that's what it's all about. Maybe you learn a little bit. Maybe you're practicing, you're listening. Maybe you're here to, to make some new friends, but I hope everybody gets something from today's lesson. Okay, are we good with prepositions? We'll get some more practice later uh, when we do our practice session. All right, let's move on. Places, we need to know places in the city. Uh, so these are nouns. They're very common, right? So ask me if you don't understand any of these. So library, school, gym, gas station, street. This one is a little tricky. There are many words that we use for streets. Some are called streets, roads, avenue, but there are many more. Drive, 
uh, close. What else? Uh, boulevard. So many, right? So there's maybe seven, eight, nine words that we use for street names. Um, but the most common ones are street, road, avenue, and I'd say drive. Okay, uh, next one is corner. So we need to know where the corner is, right? Is it on the corner or around the corner? Um, so, you know, usually in cities, there are corners all over the place. Restaurant. What's your favorite kind of restaurant? Michelle and I just went to a Thai, Thai restaurant and it was delicious. So what is your favorite type of restaurant? And I'm not gonna do the Jeopardy song this time. I'll just keep going and you can write in your favorite restaurant in the comments section. Um, hospital, we need to know where the hospital is, right? So if we have a medical problem or emergency, it's very good to know where the hospital is. Uh, bank, need to know where your bank is. Grocery store, okay? So you need food, you need to go to the grocery store. Oh, Anna answered about her favorite restaurant. And it is Italian. Okay, I love Italian food too, Anna. Uh, pasta, pizza, lasagna, it's all delicious. So yes, uh, definitely Italian food is the bomb. The bomb means very good. Uh, okay, so thank you, Anna. Moving on, grocery store, need to know where your food is. Park, uh, everybody needs to relax and have fun. So it's good to know where the park is. Washroom, this is the number one most important place to know. Where is the washroom? Because if you have a poop emergency, you need to know where that washroom is, okay? Uh, museum, so maybe you want to learn about the place that you're living. You need to know where the museum is. And Canadians love coffee. I saw something that said 80% of Canadian adults drink coffee. So we need to know where the coffee shop is or we get pretty angry. We get a headache because we are so addicted to coffee. So I just chose some, some places around the town that you should know. Uh, do you have any questions about these? Maybe there's one that you're not sure of. Feel free to ask in the comments section. Okay, let's move on. So when we're asking for directions, there's a few things we can say when we need directions from somebody. So what would you say? So in your situation, you don't know where something is. How can you ask somebody for those directions? I'll take a sip of tea while I wait. This is tea, I drink coffee. So usually when we wake up, we have a cup of coffee and then after we'll have tea uh, and then maybe an afternoon coffee. So we ha usually have two coffees during the day and in the meantime, we drink tea. So what would you say if you were asking for directions? Anybody out there? Yeah, I see a few people watching. Okay, Anna has another answer. Great. Exactly. How can I get to this place? Right? So, excuse me, how can I get to downtown? How can I get to uh, the store? How can I get to the Italian restaurant? Okay, great, Anna. That's perfect. So, definitely we use that all the time. Uh, I have a few others I can share. So excuse me, we need to get the person's attention. So excuse me, can you tell me how to get to the coffee shop, please? So this is polite, we're saying please, we're saying excuse me, can you tell me how to get to the coffee shop? Uh, okay, Chris has an answer, great. So. Chris says, how can I go? Perfect. So how can I get to or how can I go to? It's the same. So how can I go to the grocery store? Okay. And that is perfectly acceptable, Chris. So good job. 
Um, so excuse me, good to get their attention. Say please at the end because we're asking for a favor. And then you could say, can you tell me how to get to a place? And Anna has another answer. Excuse me and please and thanks, of course. Okay, so those are the polite words that we should use when we're asking somebody for a favor. Uh, exactly, Anna, great job. Okay, let's uh, move on. Hi, could you tell, oh, should be tell me, I made a mistake. Oh, stupid teacher. So, hi, could you tell me where the pharmacy is, please? Notice, we don't say, could you tell me where is the pharmacy? Instead, we say, could you tell me where the pharmacy is, please? So I hear this mistake quite often. So we put the, the is or the be verb at the end of the question. So could you tell me where the pharmacy is, please? Sorry about the mistake. And the last one I gave here, I'm sorry to bother you. Okay. So, sorry to bother you. Where is the closest gas station, please? So, maybe we're not looking for one place in particular. We just need any gas station because gas is the same everywhere. So, where is the closest gas station because I need gas very badly. So, those are just a few examples. Can you tell me, could you tell me, where is this place? How can I get to this place? These are all good for asking for directions. Okay, great, great answers, you guys. Let's move on. So when we're giving directions, we might say something like, sure, no problem, I can help you, I, I know where that is. Then we give the first step, right? So first, drive about five minutes on Queen Street toward downtown. So if this is the first step. We divide our answers into steps. First, drive about five minutes on Queen Street toward downtown so they know which direction to go. Then turn right. Remember your right and left. So which way is right? Look at your L, this is left. This one must be right. So turn right on Spencer Street. Easy. Drive for about two blocks. So I don't know exactly. It's about two blocks you need to go. And then it's on the corner on the left next to a gas station. So this is about a four or five step directions. Right? I answer, sure, no problem. First, drive about five minutes on Queen Street toward downtown. Then turn right on Spencer Street. Drive for about two blocks. It's on the corner on the left. So using the prepositions, on the corner, on the left, next to a gas station. So this would be a good answer uh, for level four, right? Because remember level three, you need about three steps. Level four, you need about four or five steps. Uh, great, so Chris has a question. Drive for around two blocks is correct too. Yes, you can say about two blocks or you can say around two blocks. So both are, are perfectly fine, Chris. That's a, that's a really good question. Okay, great. So here's a model answer when you're giving directions. You can practice this, right? So change the, the places, change the streets, change the distance, and then you can practice giving directions to somebody. So you can look at a map, you can look at Google Maps, and just practice giving somebody directions to a place. And we'll get a little, we'll get a little practice in a little bit. Uh, Chris says, thanks, no problem, Chris. Uh, it's my pleasure. So that's a sample. Now is time for our practice. Okay, so maybe you want to get a piece of paper. 
Uh, so you can write down your answers. This is my terribly drawn map. So I'm sorry, um, maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Um, so I just drew this before today's class. This is not a real place. Um, so here is our map of the city. So I am going to give you directions from one place to another place. And you have to try to figure out which place am I talking about. So on the map, we have a few streets. We have Queen Street. Here, let me go back on here. Okay, so can you see my arm? Yeah, up at the top, Queen Street, Main Street, down is Prince Street. So the streets running this way, Queen Street, Main Street, Prince Street. Up and down, we have avenues. So where am I? This way. First one is Green Avenue, Brown Avenue, and then Yellow Road. I changed it up a little bit. So the main streets in our map, Queen Street, Main Street, Prince Street, Green Avenue, Brown Avenue, and Yellow Road. Okay, now we have some places. So on the map, we can see the bank starting at the top, this way. Top bank, grocery store, coffee shop. Museum, restaurant, washrooms, and library. And then the bottom part of the map down there, gas station, gym, hospital, school. Does anybody have any questions about my beautiful map? Okay, so let's get some practice. I'm going to give you directions and you have to tell me where am I giving you directions to? Okay, let's have some fun. So first off, we will start at the coffee shop. So find the coffee shop on the map. Okay, so coffee shop is way in the far corner. So you are at the coffee shop and you exit the coffee shop on Yellow Road. Okay, so I'm going to give you directions to a place and you tell me where the place is. Okay, so go out of the coffee shop and turn left on Yellow Road. Walk about two blocks. Then turn right on Prince Street and walk for about two more blocks. The place is on the right side on the corner. Okay, let's try that again. So listen carefully, I'll repeat the same instructions. So go out of the coffee shop on Yellow Road, turn left on Yellow Road, and walk about two blocks. Turn right on Prince Street and walk about two blocks. It is on the right side on the corner. So I see we have some answers. Anna was first. Anna said Jim, but also Chris got it. Chris said Jim and May. Young, I mean, your, your English is probably too good for this lesson, but uh, that's okay. Thank you for watching. So everybody's right. So we followed the instructions we got from the coffee shop to the gym. How was it? Was it easy for you guys? Because I can make it a little bit harder if you want. Easy, not easy. Anybody get it wrong? Anybody need me to explain it? Okay, so very good. You did a great job. Let's do another one. Uh, okay, this time you will start at the bank. So up. 
up in the corner, you have the bank. The bank is on Green Avenue and Queen Street. Okay, so leave the bank and turn right on Green Avenue. Okay, Anna said easy, great. So leave the bank and go right on Green Avenue. Walk one block and turn left on Main Street. Walk two more blocks and turn right on Yellow Road. It is the first building on the left side. Okay, did you get that one? Everybody said easy on the last one, so this one I tried to make a little bit more difficult. And we have some answers already. Chris got it first this time. Chris said library. You got it, Chris. Awesome job. So I was giving directions from the bank all the way to the library on the other side of town. And Anna got it too. Way to go, you guys. You guys are amazing. So just to repeat it, because maybe you didn't quite follow along. So we started at the bank over here, turn right on Green Avenue, walk a block down this way onto Main Street, turn left on Main Street and go about two blocks Turn right on Yellow Road, and it is the first building on the left. So first building you come to on the left would be the library. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So let's do, we have some time, let's do one or two more. Uh, this time I'm going to try to trick you, okay? So maybe it's too easy. This time let's start at the school. So way down in the bottom corner, you are at the school on Yellow Road. So leave the school on Yellow Road, turn right and go a block and a half. Turn left on Main Street, past the washrooms and the restaurant and turn right on Brown Avenue. Go a block to Queen Street and take a left. It will be the building on the right side on the corner of Queen Street and Brown Avenue. That's it. So where did you end up following our map? Okay, we have an answer. And I got it. So grocery store, very good. And Chris, shortly after Anna answered, Chris got grocery store as well. You guys are awesome. So again, if you didn't quite get it this time, let's go back. So we started at the school, turn right on Yellow Road and go a block and a half. So it's not a full two blocks. It's half a block and another block. So a block and a half, turn left. So we turn left here, we go past the washrooms and the restaurant, turn right on Brown Avenue, and then we take a left on Queen Street, and it is the first building on the right side. And there we are at the grocery store. So awesome, awesome. Let's do one more and then maybe we'll get somebody to, to practice uh, giving instructions or directions on their own. So let's say this time, where should we start? So you give me a place to start and then I will, I will take you through the directions. So where should we start this time? Anywhere you want. The sky is the limit. 
Do you know that expression? The sky is the limit, meaning that you can choose anything you want as long as it's on our map. Okay, Chris. Chris says, let's start at the gym. That's a great idea. So let's start at the gym. Gym is down here. Okay, so we're at the gym. So here are your directions. Leave the gym and turn left on Prince Street. Go to the end of the block and turn left on Brown Avenue. Go one block and take a right on Main Street. Go past the washrooms and the restaurant and take a right on Yellow Road. Go one block and turn right again on Prince Street. It is near the end of the block on the left side. So, where did you go? I tried to trick you a little bit. Where did you end up? Chris got it. Chris, you are the winner today. Uh, you and Anna were very close. Anna and Chris are the two winners. Chris got it. You are at the hospital. Okay, good answer, Chris. So I tried to trick you a bit. So we left the gym here. We turned left on Prince Street, uh, the end of the block. So this is one block. Then we turned left on Brown Avenue. For one block, we turned right and we went past the washrooms and the restaurants. We turned right again on Yellow Road for one block. Then we turned right again onto Prince Street and it was at the end of the block on the left side. And there we are, we ended up at the hospital. Okay, so I hope you practice your listening. So I hope you practice listening to directions. Uh, and you also got more comfortable with the vocabulary that we use for giving directions. So that was awesome. Uh, just have a few tips. So tips for getting and giving directions. Because sometimes people talk fast. Often it's good to ask for people to clarify. Clarify means explain. Or repetition, to repeat what they say. So you want to make sure that you understand. So can you explain or can you repeat that, please? These are very important expressions. Ask the person to speak slowly, right? So speak slowly. Sometimes even ask them to spell things. So names of streets, you might want to get them to spell places for you so you can write them down. Take notes and write down their directions, right? Because, you know, my memory is pretty terrible. I don't know what your memory is like. I forget things very quickly. So actually write down the directions or have them write down or even draw a map, right? Drawing a little map can help you remember those directions. Uh, summarize them. So this is a way to check if we understand those directions. So somebody gives you directions and you say, okay, so I turn left at the lights and then I drive for three blocks and the hospital is on my right side. Is that correct? And they say, yeah, 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 you got it. Or no, you have to turn the other way. You have to turn right instead of left. Okay, so practice, 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 practice. This is the biggest one. Practice with you know activities online, practice with your English teacher. It takes practice to understand directions and be able to give somebody directions. Okay. What happened? I thought I had another one. No, I guess I don't have another slide. That's weird. Anyway, so let me check. Oh, well. Um, so that is today's lesson. Um, Let's go back to our first slide. So that is today's lesson on giving, getting and giving directions. 
Do you have any questions before we go? Because uh, I think today's class is finished. Any questions or comments about today's class? Did you learn anything? Did it help you a little bit? Uh, we will have another class on Thursday at a little bit higher level. So CLB five and six will be here at 11 o'clock. Uh, and we're gonna talk more about instructions. So not just directions, we'll talk about instructions in general. So I wanna thank you for watching. Uh, Anna says, that's very kind Anna. Thank you very much, so useful information. Thank you so much. Uh, it makes me happy to, to hear that you're learning something from these lessons and that you enjoy them. Whoa, three thumbs up. Usually two thumbs is the maximum because we only have two hands, but three thumbs means that, I don't know, maybe there's a three armed person out there or it's just really, really good. So I like three thumbs up. Thank you, Anna. Chris says, thank you for your help. It's very important to improve my English. That's good to hear. So, you know, life in Canada requires good English for your job, uh, to make friends, to build your network, to, to get what you want, to learn your way around the city, um, to order things in a restaurant. English is so important for your day-to-day -day lives. And any way you can improve is good. So hopefully I am a little part of that. You can come back to me twice a week uh, and hopefully it will improve your English. And Anna thought that was pretty funny. Maybe the three arms. Uh, okay, and Chris says, see you. Yes, hopefully see you all next time. Thank you for watching. Uh, please, if you're on YouTube, subscribe. And you can go to our website after. So maybe tomorrow you can go to our website and get some more practice. So there will be a quiz on the website and you can also study the notes on the website as well. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on Thursday, I hope. Goodbye.